today we're going to be uh, showing or looking at uh, some footage of actually forging woots and um, it's pretty straightforward but just want to quickly go over the process I'm going to use um, and uh, that way you'll know what you're watching. Okay, so uh, first of all I have at this point roasted the ingot um, and I roasted at 1100 degrees Celsius for four hours uh, and that works out I think to like 2025 Fahrenheit um, and I am going directly from the roast to forging. Uh, some people like to uh, let the, the ingot slow cool after roasting. I go straight from uh, roasting to forging. You know, different people, different stuff. Uh, I'm going to be forging in the TAS or uh, top as spine orientation. Uh, this is uh, by far the most common uh, orientation historically. Um, and uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, most Woots, Woots blades, not all, but uh, you know, most Woots blades were single edged. Um, so, you know, that, that top center is where you're most likely to get iffy material. Um, so having the, uh, that iffy material on your spine, uh, of the blade, it's the best place to put it. Um, another good reason, uh, for forging in this fashion is, or, or at least forging in the, uh, the, uh, the series of, uh, uh, of ways that I do here is it's actually pretty straightforward for hand forging. Um, so the very first thing you're going to see me do, I, I'm going to work entirely under the press, but the first thing you'll see me do is actually set uh, as though the, the ingot was face down on the anvil. So, you know, it's a dome this way, you know, so that's actually the only flat surface you have on that ingot at the beginning. Um, so if you are forging by hand, in, you know, in particular, but it, it's true regardless, but especially forging by hand, you really want to have some flat surface to start from. Uh, so by setting face down on the anvil, you could actually, uh, you know, with just a pair of, uh, you know, specialized tongs, you can actually hold that pretty securely, um, particularly if you're holding and somebody else is striking. Uh, and the, uh, the other advantage of this is that <clears throat> sorry, that top center area uh, tends to be a little bit porous. Um, now these pores are completely sealed off uh, from oxygen. So if you can close them up at the beginning of the process, uh, they're, they're just going to weld closed. You know, if you can, if you can uh, compact the ingot at the beginning, you can uh, close those up, save yourself a lot of headache later on. Because uh, if those don't close up, there's a greater chance of getting graphite precipitating in them, which is bad for performance, it is bad for your pattern, um, and actually another, you know, not that it's really a performance thing so much, but uh, it will deaden the ring of the steel. Um, so. Uh, graphite showed up in a lot of historical blades. Um, it's good to avoid if you can. Uh, so that was the first step, having the, uh, you know, ha having the uh, ingot face down. And if you're working by hand, you're working under the press, it's kind of, or, you know, or a power hammer, it's kind of the same thing. You're going to forge down through the top of that dome to create a disc. Uh, and if you imagine that there, you know, that it is porous mostly in the center, which was the last area to solidify, forging in this fashion is really compacting that uh, central area very effectively. Um, when I'm working under the press, I, uh, you know, I, I start working down towards a disc, you know, and you'll see me, I kind of work the, the ingot around uh, so that I'm pressing everywhere as evenly as possible. Uh, and then uh, I will start to work a little bit on edge to begin, uh, 
you know, kind of setting the direction I'm going to be stretching uh, the material. So you can see I've illustrated that just kind of to show that rather than going down to a disc, I'm starting to uh, develop some flat edges. Uh, and part of the reason for this is simply that uh, the width of the opening on my forge is limited. So if I just went to a disc completely, uh, I might not be able to get back in the forge. So, uh, and from there, uh, you know, it's kind of self-explanatory. Once I've got that nice disc, I've compacted the ingot. Now I can flip it up on edge and begin stretching out uh, to create a bar that is uh, top as center. I've marked the, the top center, or top as spine, sorry. I've, I've, I've marked that top center with a dot, just so it's easier to uh, keep track of. Um, and uh, you know, this is a very traditional method of forging. There are good reasons for it. If you are, uh, if you're going to be forging a double-edged blade, um, rather than flipping up on edge here, you would continue with this orientation. So you would go with a top as face orientation. Uh, not very historical, uh, but a, a, a good orientation uh, that I've used in the past quite a bit. Uh, you can also do uh, that top center becomes one end of the bar. Um, it's a little it, trickier to do by hand, uh, not to say that you can't do it, but a little trickier by hand works well under press or, uh, or under a hammer. The main thing, again, is just trying to make sure you get that initial uh, compaction uh, to close up any porosity. Um, I'm going to stop forging at uh, what I call large bar size. Um, so it's about, uh, you know, like one inch thick, inch and a half, inch and three quarters wide. Um, and I typically stop there for two reasons. One, that's a good size to uh, sort of evaluate, um, grind off rough patches, uh, you know, if there are any seams or things like that that were left from, uh, you know, maybe a, a little bit of bubbling or whatever on your, the surface of your ingot. Um, good time to grind that, uh, grind that off. And also, if you are going to be, you know, I, I stop at that size also because that's a very convenient size for uh, making integral chef's knives. So if I continue on past that point, I don't have that flexibility of making different types of uh, different types of knives, uh, swords, etc. So yeah, that's going to be. Um, where we get to in this video. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, this is my Instagram, at Peter Burt Knives, uh, and that's the best way to get in touch with me uh, with any questions. Um, and that's also the best place to uh, see any of my uh, finished products. So, hope this helps, and good luck with your melts. <laughs>